Um, we are going to roll that straight into the 2025 Hall of Fame ballot. This is, again, one of James's favorite times. Talking about yep. the Hall of Fame um, this year. James, did you, have any, did you have any way you wanted to break this down? Do you want to just kind of start with the the, the kind of the bottom, bottom names and kind of work our way up a little bit? You're the host, buddy, anywhere you want to go. So start with the bottom, I guess. I start with the bottom. So one of my favorite things, the way um, – Baseball reference, and this is off of baseball reference, the way they show it, and this is one of my favorite ways, is how they value whether you're going to be a Hall of Famer or not. So they, they have the whole list there, and like like we talked about, it's you have to have 10 years of service time, and then even upon that, the writers then have to basically approve you to be even on the ballot. So, so it's not even that it's that you're even worthy enough of being on the ballot. So a lot of guys yeah. have 10 years service time. And I say a lot of guys, very few guys have 10 years service time, but in, in terms of the ballot, it would be a lot longer if this was the case. Um, this yeah, is probably uh, like 50, 60 games, uh, 50, 60 players long every year. Maybe yeah, something like that. It would it'd be, it would be it'd long. But again, what this list is, is everybody that they think at least should have a conversation, mm-hmm. at least be, at least be a part of conversation. And, they can justify somebody voting for you. Like whether your name is Ichiro Suzuki or whether your name is Fernando Rodney, they can justify someone saying, yes, I viewed them as a Hall of Famer. Or like I saw Fernando Rodney every day of my career and he is a Hall of Famer. Okay, we can justify it. So to me, you should never question whether any of these guys got a vote because the writers already stepped back and said, these guys are Hall of Famers, at least, at least in the conversation of Hall of Fame. And then somebody might view them as a Hall of Famer or not. Somebody at least views the, one of these guys as a Hall of Famer, right? Or, or sorry, one writer views at least every one of these guys as a Hall of Famer. Yeah, I mean, these are the guys that there were good players and then there are great players. And the question is, are they great enough to become immortal players? And yes. that's what you are if you're a Hall of Famer. So all of these guys are great. There's not a single one of them that you would say isn't a top-tier player that you would have loved to have on your team at some point. Yeah, this is the great list. This is not the good list. This is uh, you know, to have ten years of service time. You're you're good. They're all good. This mm-hmm. is the great list. And then then this then we get to have this conversation of when when these guys um, exceed greatness and become a Hall of Famer, right? So we'll start at the bottom. Um, I don't know. Do you want to just uh, if you got anything to say about the career? Or I got anything to say? I'll say about it. Yeah. Uh, we'll go right there. Number twenty eight, Fernando Rodney, Hall of Famer. Yes or no? No, not a Hall of Famer. Great player, but no. Great player, had some incredible times in his career, um, you know, 327 saves. I mean, but again, he was a little bit of a journeyman, kind of jumped around a little bit, but dude, he was a, he was a stud and made the sideways hat kind of famous as a closer. Yep. I'll give you one of those, Fernando Rodney, but um, Hall, very good. Uh, Carlos Gonzalez. Not a Hall of Famer. Not a Hall of Famer. Um, Brian McCann. <sighs> I sh- he should get some votes. He should get a lot more love than he has been getting. He's a very, very good ball player. He caught a lot of games on a very important team. Uh, he's not a Hall of Famer, but should be one of those guys that should be on the ballot for a few years to have a conversation about. Absolutely, and I agree with agree with you. Um, I think everything you said is perfectly accurate. Uh, handled some incredible pitching staffs, had some great years in his career, some on some wonderful teams. Not a Hall of Famer, but absolute stud. Um, Adam Jones. Adam Jones. Ooh. Love Adam Jones. One of <laughs> one of my favorite experiences in broadcasting was the day that I had Adam Jones on the radio show with Kevin Kennedy on Sirius XM. And while he was doing the interview, he was pulled over by the cops for having tints on his windows that were That's too so dark. Funny. <laughs> so, that'd be the best interview ever i was i was on the speakerphone and i told adam i'm like hey adam just tell him who you are and the cop says well who are you he's like well i'm a ball player i i play for the uh for the uh, orioles he's like oh i'm a red sox fan i know who jacoby yeah. ellsbury is but i don't know who you are ah. and, and it was funny because it got picked up by some of the local you know by cbs sports and Oh, Adam Jones gets picked, you know, gets pulled over during an interview and they all want the interview. And we're like, no, we're not going to exploit this. Nothing happened. And they interviewed his mom about it. They said, you know, what do you think about your son getting pulled over? It was just a weird situation. But as far as his uh, Hall of Fame credentials, not a Hall of Famer. But again, in the same conversation with Brian McCann, should be on for a couple of years, not five, but, you know, one or two, just so he can get some more love that he deserves because his career was good enough for that. 
Out of all the guys so far, I would say him and our friend of Rodney would be the best on my list so far. These four, uh, great career, great ball player. I, and again, like, um, brought some awareness of some stuff off the field and stuff like that. Um, changed the game, went to, I think went to Japan, right? It, it, it's kind of all around ball player. Um, one of those guys you don't want to face. One of those guys you yeah. don't want to face. Russell and Martin. A good dude, too. You're a great dude. Russell Martin. Um, no, not a Hall of Famer. Great Canadian catcher. Uh, fun to work with. I, I played against them, played with them, and 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 loved my experiences against them. Great battle, um, but definitely not a Hall of Famer. Hanley Ramirez, one of the most talented players I have ever seen. Uh, not exactly the best attitude on the in the times that <laughs> I've seen him. He, he gets into the douche category for a little bit. I think he got out of the he he backed his way out of the douche category, but he definitely yeah. was in it for a little while. Yeah, he, he stepped in that category for a while. Um, but really, really talented guy and had a Hall of Fame talent. Oh, yes. Uh, Hall of very talented. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's put it that way. Uh, definitely did, had a very disappointing career compared to his talent level. Dude, Like I, there wasn't many guys I ever stepped on the field that was better than him. Um, but it just depended on what handle you're getting that day and, 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 and where you're at with that. Kind of reminded me of A-Rod. A Rod, um, way I would say this: A Rod's in, in a small list for me, and, and most talented players of all time to play this game. I don't think he was there, but he was on track. And what that might have been a difference. To be short. honest, it might have been a difference of steroids or not. Like in yeah. all in all BS reality, Hanley Ramirez on steroids might have been A Rod. We don't know, but we do know A Rod got caught doing it. So we don't know, or PEDs, whatever you want to call them nowadays, but. Um, that might have been a really interesting thing if he played during the '90s. But Henry Ramirez is a Hall of Famer. Yeah, I'm just I'm just saying it. I'm throwing that sh that shit against the wall. Curtis Granderson. So we're not no Henry Ramirez. Curtis no Granderson. Henry. Are we going fast? We got to go a little faster. I think. Yeah. Here. Grandy, uh, love him as a player. Love him as a human being. Not a Hall of Famer, but damn, what if I was owning a ball club, I want him on my team. Uh, Adam Jones, a great guy. Hanley or Curtis Granderson makes him looks like a like a bad guy compared to yes. how great he is. Uh, played with him in the Arizona Fall League. Um, I remember I felt so bad. Some of the guys broke his. He had a picture of him and his mom. Somebody broke it. Oh. I think one of the worst days ever. When he was, uh, I just felt so bad for him because he was he was hurt. Heart his heart broke. Um, they didn't mean to, or they're just fucking around or something. Um, but um, one of the best guys I ever been with. Uh, played with I the respect for him through not a Hall of Famer, but Hall of Fame man, Hall of Fame ball player, Hall of Fame teammate, Hall of Fame everything. Just didn't quite have like if you gave if Hanley Ramirez Curtis Granderson's mind, oh, oh Hall God. Fame. Oh God. All right. Ben Zobris. Nope. Nope. Uh great guy. Nope. Troy Tulowitzki. Another Hall of Fame type talent, but just couldn't stay healthy. Couldn't stay healthy, and then I, I was with him with the Jays, watching him coming back. I think he got locked up into some mindset stuff that just wasn't right, where he needed to change him, really make some big changes in his career to come back, and just was going down the wrong road as far as like just kind of trying to just change his mechanics and stuff. You're like, dude, like everyone was like yelling at him, like you need to like, change some stuff, and he just didn't quite want it, or maybe not know it. Some people don't know it, but um, but yeah, just couldn't stay healthy. Uh, one of my favorite teammates of all time, Felix Hernandez. Nah, he's terrible. I don't like him. <laughs> no, he's just not a Hall of Famer. But damn, was he good? He was. He wasn't good. He wasn't dominant long enough. Yes, I would say this. He came up so young that he was so good early on that he threw too many strikes. Yeah. And if he would have been a little bit more of a, if he would have, when he first came up, if it would have been in two thousand twenty-three. Uh, versus back when he came up in like oh four or oh five whatever it was, uh, he would have uh, won a Cy Young his rookie year. He would have been Paul Skeens because the problem was he threw too many strikes. Where nowadays people would be like, dude, you're throwing too many strikes. Move the ball more, spin it more, move this, and because he could do everything. Back then it was about throw strikes, and I think he got hit around a little bit. Not hit around, but like too many balls in play, too much action, and not enough punch outs. Because he just wanted to throw strikes, and everyone told him to throw strikes. Then they told him, "Hey, spin the ball more, do this, do that." And then he started. He was, how, he was, uh, you know, Cy Young worthy every single year of his career. What you, you had something to say? If he played with Greg Maddox, he would have been a Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. Yeah. Yep. I, I, I give you that. Like 
I, one of the, the very best. I've never seen somebody be able to do the things with a baseball on the fly. Like we'd be in the bullpen and say, hey, Felix, try this. And he would just do it. And then yep. he would try this complete opposite pitch and he would do it. And, and somebody who he re, reinvented at what a changeup meant, throwing a 90, 90 mile an hour per hour, per hour changeup. The whole world went, What? That's a fastball. And he went, Nope, that's a changeup, brother. And that was absolutely sick. Um, got to close for him for two years. I, I feel like I had a part of, of both of those years where he was number two in Cy Young and number one in Cy Young, where I made sure there was not one game. I don't think there was one game he ever pitched I blew save. Um, oh, that's I'm good. proud of that because that, that went on his resume and uh, that's my job was to make sure he got those accolades and great job Felix Ian Kinsler nope not a Hall of Famer not a Hall of Famer hell of a hitter don't want to see him step up to play when games matter I, one of my greatest memories is getting him out <laughs> all right Dustin Pedroia so unbelievably underrated he is the David Wright of the Red Sox he was there to turn them from the I mean he wasn't there for the first championship but he made them into a legitimate Yankees type legacy for this century. Just very, very good. If he had stayed healthy, he had the MVP. I loved watching Pedroia play, played second base that, you know, they're not enough Hall of Famers. Uh, he should be on for five or six years just so he can get some love, but will never become a Hall of Famer, unfortunately. It's hard. Like you're looking at Ian Kinsler. Ian Kinsler has almost 200 more hits than him. Um, he had a 299 average over his course of his career, and Kinsler had more home, almost 100 home or home runs. I played on the 08 team with him. I believe that might have been his MVP or Rookie of the Year season. I don't know what it was. Um, Jason Veritek was the captain, and he was the man. He was the captain of the ship. Dustin Pedroia was the heart and soul, and he was the driving force. Like Poppy and and man, Poppy was the one behind with the with the with the mic and talking and all this stuff. He was the voice. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Manny was the quiet, quiet, just do his thing type of thing. Pedroia you know was who Dustin Pedroia is? He's the undouchey Lenny Dykstra. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like he's the heart and soul. Like if he was a New York Yankee, he would have been Derek Jeter. Like, yeah. And, and cause he had the Posada who was a little bit quieter, probably everyone really listened to in the clubhouse, but he was, he, you don't understand how important he was in those clubhouses and it, the heart and soul that he kept us moving forward, feeding and pumping. It doesn't matter who was on the mound, but PD's like, I got him guys. I got him. Laser show, laser show today. Check this out. Get front row seat. I'm about to hit him. Like, and there was just something about it. Um, absolutely incredible he should get votes and he should i he should stay on the ballot for me for several years and have some really great conversations because it meant more to the game but he's not a hall of famer but he's a red sox hall of famer to me without yeah. doubt he's red sox ever cc hall of famer hall of famer dude this dude man like what he did with milwaukee when he got traded to the brewers that's it for me like it, there was nothing more like after that you're a hall of famer he just took the ball every four days uh, drove them through playoffs and, and almost ruined his career doing so. Yep. Uh, he battled his demons. I mean, think about this. If he was sober the whole time, how much better his career numbers would have been at the end. Yeah, and he was one of the greatest athletes I, I'd ever seen as a pitcher. And like, yeah. he could still 360 dog and do all this stuff even when everyone's like, oh, he's so overweight and all this stuff. He, he battled you a lot. You looked at that picture that was just up there. Alex, can you bring that uh, picture back up there of CC? You look at him, he's a bit chunky over there. Now you look at him, the dude is jacked. Can you imagine yeah. if he was that kind of shape when he was pitching? Yeah, but you know, I, sometimes it helps, sometimes it hurts, all the stuff. It's, it's just absolutely insane. Like he, how good he was. He was good with great with the Indians, like Brewers against the Yankees, who kind of reinvented his career. And, yep. and it was just absolutely insane how good this dude was. I, I, don't want, I don't know if he's ballot? a first ballot Hall of Famer. To me, he's not a first ballot Hall of Famer because there's so many of the, the core numbers that he's missing. Um, yeah, he's got the 3,000 punch outs, but like uh, he's missing the wins 251. And like he doesn't have those just like years where he just like year after year after year through the playoffs. Like, like Billy was talking about how like, playoffs matter, dude. And, and, and like sometimes you don't have chances, sometimes you do, but uh, it does matter because you're comparing it to the other dudes. Um, not a first ballot, but he's a Hall of Famer in my eyes. He probably will be a first ballot Hall of Famer, but not in my eyes. I don't know. Um, I, I bet he gets in on the third ballot. Okay, I can see that. Um, Ichiro Suzuki. Unanimous. Absolutely. Best unanimous Hall of Famer, which, you know, they, they there's the guy right there. Griffey should have been unanimous too, uh, but 
Yeah, I mean, once Mariano went in unanimous, how are you going to make any case against Ichiro? There is nothing. You want to make a case against him? Just say that he lied and he didn't. He pretended he didn't speak English so he didn't have to talk to the media. <laughs> yeah, right. Other than that, there's not a bad thing about Ichiro. One of the funniest guys I've ever played with, one of the best hitters, uh, defensive, just absolute gem. Yes, he might have not been, been the, the, the diving catch guy, but that's Japanese baseball. It's a lot different than here. You don't dive. He slid for everything um, with great arms. Holy, holy crap, his arm. Uh, how good that was when he first came up. And, and just um, it's it, Pete Rose and him. You know, it just is like, like the best hit, base hit hitters of all time. And it's just how you want to look at it. And and for me, I think he blows some of those numbers out of the water if he's in the big leagues his whole career. He's just – you would look at him differently if he just – because but he couldn't be in the big leagues. He was it's in so Japanese funny. baseball. It's so funny because for years all we heard was, oh, you should watch him in batting practice. He can hit home runs anytime he wants. And then, oh, you should watch him throw because if he wanted to, he could have been a pitcher. A couple of years ago, what, what is it, like 50 now? A couple of years ago, he went up against some uh, some high schoolers. He went up there and just started striking them all out in Japan. I mean, the guy could do anything. Plus, he was funny. He signed a jersey that said, David, pray for hair growth. Yes, that's one of the best. I love it. Uh, Itro, 100%. To me, yeah. 100%. I never, I, I, I've never. been with, I don't even know how many Hall of Famers I've played with now, 10, 15, who knows. He's a lot. 100% Hall of Famer. Um, but he, he joins the Mariano crowd for me. Like, yep. like, there is a difference when he's, like, he's just different. It was a different thing. Like, he, Griffey should have been 100%. Um, Maddox should have been 100 I don't understand how Maddox is not 100%. I, how Randy Johnson wasn't 100%. There's a lot of guys you can say that. Change the game. Um, all right. Now, the guys that are already on the ballot, let's hit them really quick. So I know we've hit them before. We've talked about this before. David Wright, nope. is he going to go in this year? Nope. No. I'm glad he's still on the ballot. Torrey Hunter? Nope. No. God, it hurts my soul that he only has 7%, but I understand why. I get it. But it, it just hurts my soul. K-Rod? Really should have a lot more votes, and I can make a case. He was the most dominant closer in baseball for a while. He should be a Hall of Famer in my eyes. I don't think he'll ever get there, but he should be. More saves than uh, than, than Billy. I think he played more seasons or something. He was incredible, absolutely dominant when he stepped on that field. Like his first from his very first game, he was absolutely dominant. That's a beautiful part about it. Like he came on the scenes and had a huge part of the Angels World Series run, and then just dominated from there on out. Um, yeah, I should have more vote than that. Like, it's just disrespectful, almost. Mark Burley. Uh, poor man's ace. Very, very, very good pitcher, but never did I look at him as the most dominant pitcher in the game. Great pitcher. Would love to have him on the mound every five days, but not a Hall of Famer in my eyes. I'm still amazed that he has more votes than Torrey Hunter. Uh, great player. Great player, like you said. Poor man's ace. Like, could just take the ball every day, but ne never a Hall of Famer. Um, yeah. Andy Pettit. Um, he's on He's on the cusp for me. I know he's not going to get it. Because of, I don't get that. This dude should be at the 70% marker. It's because of the PEDs. The same reason yeah. that Clemens. Yeah, but before it was illegal. Before it was illegal. Yeah. And the dude just he has one of the best playoff resumes in the history of baseball. Like Mariano. Right. It, it's like Mariano, him, and Schilling. Like in all reality. Like uh, the greatest numbers. And he had 256 wins. Like, like CeCe's going to get in with 251. And... Pettit was way better in the playoffs. Like he was the greatest, one of the greatest yeah. starters of all time. Um, it's actually it's disrespectful, I think, to the numbers um, mm -hmm. that he's only at thirteen percent. Uh, Jimmy Rollins, uh, the heart and soul of those great Phillies teams for a long time, doesn't get the appreciation that he deserves. But won an MVP, but won't get into the Hall of Fame. Bobby Abreu. Uh, lesser than Jimmy Rollins. Great player, but not a Hall of Famer. There's certain things that he did. did that was like 60, 60 war. I mean, um, he came up and he was just a stud. I, yeah. I don't know. I, I'm borderline on, on Bobby Abreu. I, I just sometimes I look at the numbers and go, whoo. Um, but he doesn't have any of those big, the big numbers. Like he's so close, but he's never in, in the, the big ones. Omar Vizquel. Best glove I have ever seen. Still um, don't get this. I'm sorry? I still don't understand this one. 
still don't get it. The domestic violence allegations against him post-career really screwed up his Hall of Fame chances. I think he probably would have gotten in if it wasn't for that. But he doesn't have the hitting numbers that a Hall of Famer should have. And if you're going to get in just on defense, you better have a sparkling resume off the field. And unfortunately, he doesn't, even though he was never convicted of anything. But the allegations and the fact that he settled out of court on certain things puts a black eye in his career, unfortunately. Best shortstop of all time as far as fielding percentage. Mm -hmm. Best shortstop of all time fielding percentage. So let me say that again. The most premier position in baseball. The greatest defensive player of all time. Ozzie Smith, we've been talking about it all day long. The Wizard. He was better defensively. and by, say, by the same metrics, too. By the same people that were measuring those people at the time. Not by today's metrics. Omar could do everything with defensively you can. And still had, uh, it was 123 hits short of 3,000. On 123. Give, give me a break. And, and he was on some of the greatest baseball teams of all time. I, I, the domestic stuff, I, I get it. Uh, but there are people that have done way worse. That's in the Hall of Fame. And he he should be in. And the fact that Chase Utley has more votes, it bothers me. Truly, actually bothers me because Chase yep. Utley couldn't hold his jockstrap, I don't believe. Um, Chase Utley. Chase Utley. Uh, on behalf of my friend Tommy, I just want to say, screw you, Chase Utley. No, no, no Hall of Fame for you. Omar Vizquel had 1,000 more hits. W Omar Vizquel had 1,000 more hits. Yeah. A th he had a career. He had a career more. Yeah. You know, and, and that's that that's the type of stuff. And, and I same batting average, like I don't I don't get it. And then yeah, Chase Ellie played on some great teams, so so did Omar and and um I think everyone looked at Chase Ellie said, Yeah, I want this guy on my team, but everybody looked at Omar and said, I can't get him on my team because he's not available. Like he'll never be available. Um yeah. I, I just that uh all right, a couple quick ones here. Manny. Nope, steroids. Got popped. Hey, Rod. Got popped. Same thing. Got popped. Yep. Man, he's got this the second to last year. A Rod will be gone, and, and he's got six more years after this. Carlos Beltran. We this starts getting interesting. Yes, Carlos Beltran to me is undoubtedly a Hall of Famer. Could do everything you wanted. Played stellar defense. Could hit for average. Could hit for power. Uh, a very smart baseball mind. Yeah, the stuff with the Astros at the end of his career, that's going to mar him. But at the end of the day, he is a Hall of Famer without a doubt. Don't know if he'll get in this year, but he will get in at some point. Uh, he won't get in this year. He's at 57%. He, he's third year on the ballot. He just needs – it's too high of a jump. You know, it, it's too high of a jump uh, in one year. This, is, this trend looks like it'll be five, six years, probably six years. Um, I, yes. Um, he has less hits than Omar Vizquel. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Omar Vizquel played 40 years. He retired I get it. in 72. I, I, I get it. In way different position. Uh, he also had 200 more home runs than Omar Vizquel. <laughs> so a lot of different stuff going on here. <laughs> OPS, 200 points. Higher. But there's a lot of different stuff. Different ball player. Um, uh, to me, he's a Hall of Famer at some point. I think I've said no in the past. I think I re-looked really at it and started looking at it. He is a Hall of Famer. Why would you get involved with the Astro stuff? Just be, if you're, you're a Hall of Fame type of player, be a Hall of Fame man. And don't let them cheat so blatantly like that. If you got some guy's signs, you got stuff figured out, don't use electronics to do it. Um, because I if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. His, yeah, I think, I think this is marring his stuff. I, I, I think it's marring. I, some people say it's no... Um, some people will will completely disagree with me uh, online as far as that it's that it's hurting his Hall of Fame chances. I think it's the reality of it that he was involved with it. I do think he'll get in, and probably the worst thing that happened was that the Mets fired him. Um, yeah, if they wouldn't have fired him, probably wouldn't have gotten the heat that he did. Um, it is what it is, though, and I think it's going to take some time. I think there needs to be a real conversation about it. And, and honestly, probably one of the best things he can do is he, if he talked about it, it probably just like chill out of it out. Or maybe just shut up and never say anything about it. Like, act like it never happened and in a couple of years. You'll get in. Um, Andrew Jones, eighth year of about 61.6%. Uh, see, this is tough for me. And we talked about this a little bit the other night because, you know, I, as a Met fan, I got to watch a lot of the Braves. Uh, and anybody who had TBS got to see a lot of the Braves. Bottom the line is, the nation. Yeah. He, 
Andrew was the fifth best player on his team. So you never thought of him as front and center because it was always Glavin, Maddox, Smoltz, and then you had Chipper. So he was always the second Jones boy. But he was a one of the best center fielders, if not the best defensive center fielder that I've ever seen. And he could absolutely rake. Um, you put a gun to my head, I would say Hall of Famer, but I don't like it as a Met fan. But, yeah, he's a Hall of Famer. To me, I, I look at him and Carlos Baltron, and, and I think he blows Baltron away. I, I, oh 2,000 less at bats, the same home runs. 2,000 less at bats and the same amount of home runs. Okay. It's just like, dude, I know where I go. Baltron has so much power, like all this. And defensively, there was no one better. No. no one in center field I don't know if I'd want. I don't know if I would pick Griffey over him, to be honest. Because I would see him uh, – I think Griffey was a smarter ball player. I think Griffey – from bait, from a hitting standpoint, that's I mean, come on, that's another it's a whole yeah. other conversation. Um, he would play in positions. I remember watching him going like, "What? Like, why was he there?" And then you, he was like baiting you to try to hit it over him. And he was yeah. just like, "Go get it!" Like it was it was so easy for him. Where the highlight reel of of Griffey is him making the amazing catch and this and like the swagger and stuff. I think the game was so easy for for andrew defensively that you lose he was there he didn't have to dive he didn't have to make the jumping catch he was this there it was him or edmonds i remember you brought that up yeah. Edmonds is the one you see him making the dive making this because he was half the player defensively that jones was jones was standing there and you go okay whatever that's an easy play or where Edmonds is diving. And, and that's the thing about him. Like he was already in the position before the ball, before the play, before this. Like it was just, it came so easy for him defensively that it looked boring. Yeah. It's as if you're, if you're not a hardcore baseball fan and you see Andrew Jones, you're like, oh, why is he loafing? But he's not loafing. He was just so good at being in the right position. It was so fast and so good defensively that it just came so natural to him that he made it all look easy. And that's really tough to do in a sport like baseball. Absolutely. And and um, I don't think – and that's the thing with him. What, what bothers me is you ask any player that played against him or with him, the answer is hell to the yes. Yeah. What, what Billy Wagner said, dude, like this – it's an absolute travesty this dude is not in. Um that's a Hall of Famer to me. I think if everyone looked at Bel Carlos Beltran, we'd have a conversation and say, yes, and a good Paul player, but this and I, we're trying to figure out the argument. There's, I've never heard anybody say Andrew Jones is not a Hall of Famer, anybody that played with him or against him. I've never, I've never heard, heard a bad word about him either. Never. And that's what bothers me is like when you sit there and you look at the numbers across the board, they play. You know, like, it, it, yes, he only has 2,000 hits, but we're saying the dude, you know, like, at 434 home runs and uh, the greatest, def maybe one of the best defensive center fielders of all time. It, it Listen, if so you're gonna if you're gonna talk about Omar Vizquel being a Hall of Famer, then you got to talk about Andrew Jones because yes. he was the outfield version of Vizquel, and he had like the power numbers and you yeah. know, stuff like that too, um, and was obviously a big part of the one of the greatest runs of of baseball teams ever. Yeah, uh, Billy Wagner just had him on the show. Last year on the ballot, he needs five votes. Does he pick up five votes? No, we had him on the show already. We don't got to kiss his butt. Forget him. We don't need him. No, of course. Billy is a Hall of Famer. He will get the five votes, and I will be right there to ask for his autograph in Cooperstown where it says Hall of Fame 25 under Billy Wagner's name. He will be a Hall of Famer, and he's going to go in as an Astro. Absolute joke if he doesn't get him. He should have been in a long time ago. Um, I understand why some vote one, some voters might have held out early, but now it's a it's an absolute joke. Um, he revolutionized closing. Again, I, I kind of asked him the question, um, but the stuff aspect he changed the game because after that everyone went shit. All I have to do is really throw hard and pound it through the zone. It wasn't as easy as that, but I can just beat you on stuff. I don't have to be perfect with like cutter and then the best slider ever and all this stuff i can just be it that's why closers now are just who they are because of him he started it he started that trend and of who these guys are 